In order to understand Korea, you need to understand Cheong. Cheong is the interpersonal guru, affinity, closeness, bonding. Han is the sorrow, resentment, and awe. Korean history is a series of uh, disruptions and uh, defeat and uh, loss. Chung is what embraces us uh, back together. My name is Grace Kim. I was born in China, the lunar calendar. April 6, 1931. My grandparents and my parents left North Korea, their hometown, because after Japanese occupation and uh, their control started, they could not uh, stay there. My mother's full name is Song Do Song. At that time, they kept their, mid their maiden name, and she was born in North Korea and she passed away five years ago at the age of 92. I remember always her image is prayer, praying for family and other people, and she served the church for a long time. My mother was raised by grandparents, but the grandparents were wonderful people. Uh, they built elementary school and started the school there in that town and also a Presbyterian church. <laughs> so my mother grew up in church. But at that time, women were not ordained as a minister. So she was a church worker all her life as a volunteer. <laughs> and she had a beautiful mezzo-soprano voice. She was a soloist and the Sunday school teacher, the women's organization president, choir director. I think she had done everything. My father's full name is Chun Che Wung. If he lived now, he will be 100. And he passed away when he was 60. Although he was not a rich person, he saved the money and donated the money to independence movement in Shanghai and then also a scholarship for Korean students there, but he does not want to put his name. So nobody knew who is doing that, but later they all found out. <laughs> he does not worry about money, uh, what to eat tomorrow, but he worked hard. He said, oh, God will provide us. My father uh, grew up in North Korea my grandmother always uh, visited the poor family with rice and uh, other uh, vegetables because they are so poor. Especially when a young woman had a baby, she's the one who always uh, took something to those young women's home. My grandfather was a very, really gentle man, and I think he's the one really uh, made the decision, let's leave here. We cannot uh, suffer here anymore, and uh, left for China. And then eventually they went to Shanghai. My mother used to play organ. So my mother is a romantic type. My father is an engineer, and he is more workaholic and uh, more serious, and then uh, he doesn't know how to make a job. But, uh, my mother is a lively, sociable, and uh, she, she is a romantic woman who like, writes a lot of poetry and uh, also like uh, music. My grandfather was a over -med medical doctor, although he was a farmer, but a uh, farmer, uh, oriental medicine, medical over ovarist, acupuncturist. My father was a highly motivated toward the higher education. So he went to Tokyo, Japan to study graduate school at the Tokyo, Tokyo Butsuri Gakko, which is a kind of Japanese MIT. He, he went to study civil engineering. I went to Tokyo kindergarten. This was just the beginning of the Second World War. 
and my father had to work in the evening. It's okay, not work during the daytime. He goes to school. He got sick, and then we had to come back to Korea. The first place we went to was a uh, Yongbyon, North Korea, which is now headline city because of the North Korea established nuclear plant there, Yongbyon. Yongbyon is uh, one of the most beautiful countryside uh, town. That's where I went to school. Because I lived in China, uh, we were really underdog. Without uh, having country, living in another country is not easy. But Japanese military government told us, you belong to us, so do whatever we say. You have to change your Korean name to Japanese name. So we had to change the name. And my Japanese name was Tagawa Keiko. And my father sat and cried. He said, we even losing our name. We lost the country, we lost the name, and we lost the home. And then, really, they struggled to make a living. But in Shanghai, just before the end of World War II, uh, he had a really wonderful business that was a taxi business. So he was very successful for just a short period. <laughs> and then we had to leave. The one day in Shanghai, B-29 came and dropped the leaflet. And it was written in Korean and the English and the Chinese. My father went out, went out and picked one. And he said, oh, this is a great news. We can go home. So I said, what do you mean? Because the Japanese people always said that they were winning the war. So we just believed that. But this leaflet said, they are not winning. They are losing. And the war will be over pretty soon. So all Koreans and the Taiwanese, if you like to go back to your own country, this is the time. Toward the end of before the Second World War, all these st students at Osan Chungakyo, as well as all the young junior students were mobilized to put in the uh, military labor camp in Pyongyang under Japanese occupation. Those days are very, I, I cannot say happiest, but memorable period, because, because they laid the foundation for my subsequent ideas development and the character. And especially Osan Middle School was a foundation for me to be more mature Korean nationalistic ideas. So Pyongyang, Factory was uh, Bob Wyatt. We, we were there kept for one year and a half. We were trained to be expert in the machinists, cutting the bullets and uh, all kinds of uh, lace work. So we were able to produce Japanese weapons. So I was uh, 14 years old. August 15, 1945, we were ordered to assemble in a big ground. There's a, there's a big PA system. Somebody was talking in quivering voices, voice in the PA system, loudspeaker. We didn't know what was, what was being said, but it, learned, it turned out that it was a Japanese Emperor, Emperor, Emperor Hirohito's surrendering statement. We were shocked because we thought we were winning. We, 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 we couldn't believe that we were losing the war. We, we, we were taken to the Osan Middle School, where we hometown. At that time, our TC Japanese officer lieutenant was uh, our school lieutenant who, who drilled us daily with, uh, with uh, knife surfers, candles. Judo. He committed Karaharakiri suicide. But before he did that, he killed his wife, who 
who was pregnant. So the school was crem school cremated him. The the I was the president of the class at the time. I was uh, selected to pick up the bones of the dead soldiers, put in the boxes. Luke wanted to mention at this point that he had mixed feelings because he felt sorry for the Japanese lieutenant who had killed himself and his wife, especially from a humanitarian perspective. Plus, Luke was very indoctrinated to the Japanese style and they were getting ready for the upcoming invasion by the Americans, which made him actually resentful. 